Early on in my remote control career, I started to get involved with electronics and batteries and lipos, and I bought a very cheap and cheerful um, charger for the batteries, and then got this charger, which is a Bantam uh, BC610, which has been uh, with me now for about four or five years and been a fantastic charger. Now, one of the things that I have noticed, and early on in the forums, I could never understand why people always gave this advice, but when you were charging, rather than have the rock steady figures like you can see on this screen, the, the numbers would be jumping around, you know, from one to two tenths of a volt. And um, it meant that the balance charge in particular on a battery wasn't very good from the charger. And rather than replace the charger, um, when you actually asked in the forums back in the day what was going on, they recommended that you actually replaced um, the cable that you connected the balance tap to the charger with. Now actually, what's going on here, I just wanted to make a quick video for those of you who are new to RC and to charging, just to kind of pass on this, um, this knowledge. When you in install a battery in a model, you're using the Dean's connector or the XT60 or whatever it is that you use on your models to transfer the power. When you charge it, the charger is usually checking the overall voltage out of this plug, but actually trickle charging and balancing via this plug here. And it's this plug, it's reading the voltages of the individual cells in the battery. And when it gets each cell to be as close to 4.2 as it can get them, then it'll stop charging. That works fine if there's a great connection, but if there isn't a great connection, then it really struggles. And if there's any resistance in this connection between the balance plug and the lead that goes into the charger, and here's where this lead plugs into the battery charger in my kit on the shelf, then what happens is any current that flows through these wires into these individual cells to balance the individual cells in the battery will cause a resistance, a voltage drop, which means it never actually reads the correct voltage. Now, why does this happen? Well, it's a mechanical thing. It's nothing to do with electrics. It's simply that these connectors get worn over time. And by constantly plugging in and unplugging these balance taps into the cable or into the actual connector in the charger itself, what happens is you start to degrade the actual pins in the connector. So here's a picture of the one that I took out of the uh, of the model. I've actually just replaced one on this charger, which is why it's reminded me to do the video. And here's a picture of a new one. And if we put them side by side, you can see that that black marking that's on the one that I took out, which is on the left here, is all of that damage to the pins from the constant mechanical pulling and pushing, but also from the current that's and the electricity that's been flowing through those little pins, because they're not very big. Now, the advice is if you're ever seeing that those voltages jump around on your charger, then the first thing you should check is the balance connector because the balance connectors are really cheap and cheerful to replace. You can buy bags of the things, uh, both male and female, and if you just take one of these out, then you can actually um, unsolder the one that's um, showing signs of wear and pop a new one on. And then once you put that all back on the charger, you'll find that it will work perfectly again. So in summary, for those of you who are having a problem with your charger with the voltages jumping around, check that this little connector on a cable like this doesn't have those little black marks. If it does, get yourself on eBay, grab some of these 3S balance connectors or whatever it is you need, replace it on the board or cable that you're after and you'll be fine. The tip, if you don't have an external board like I've shown on this Bantam, some of the um, the, the cheaper chargers have the connection right in the side, is I'd get yourself a little extension cable that goes from a female to a male. doesn't have to be very long, that kind of distance of like seven, eight centimeters is fine. And that means that rather than you constantly plugging in and pulling out in the connector that's in the actual device itself, you've got another one on the end of a cable that's getting all the wear and tear 
and that's much easier and cheaper to replace or repair than it is to get a new charger or start soldering bits and pieces off a PCB. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and happy flying.